This episode is sponsored by Sansama. Stick around till the end of the video to learn more about it. But for us, for some reason, it tends to send out these relentlessly negative messages. You're stupid, you're boring, you're ugly, nothing's going to work out, you're lazy. Without your attention, it can't survive. Don't let the demon get you. Do you ever feel like the amount of work you have to do is not going to fit into the amount of time you have to do it? Yeah, that's because it doesn't. (laughs) At most jobs, we really can't do all the things and still be done with work on time, which has been really apparent to me now that I have a new baby and working late is not an option. What I use to help me prioritize is Sansama. Sansama is this system that helps people mindfully plan their workday. You can open one program and see everything you need to do, from your email, from your calendar, Asana, which is way less overwhelming. My sleep-deprived brain deeply appreciates this. Second, time estimates. You can set estimates for how long you think each task will take, so you can see what your workload is for that day and bump back tasks that can wait. This allows me to stick to my current part-time schedule and even make sure I have time to pump. It also allows me to see when the amount of time I thought I would need to do a task is way off, which allows me to adjust my expectations for next time. Also, with TeamView, my team can see what it is that I'm working on that day and shoot me a message if they need me working on something else instead. They can even add tasks to my day in advance so that I know that I'm working on what they need me working on most. Sometimes the team even leaves me little reminders or affirmations. Ah, that feels good. (laughs) I'm really surprised how effective I've been coming back from maternity leave, even part-time. Sansama is a lot of the reason why. Task Positive Network? engage. If you want to try it, go to sansama.com slash a slash Jessica from How to ADHD. Sansama is so ADHD friendly, they have a trial period that doesn't require a credit card up front. So you can decide whether or not you want to be charged for it after you try it out. If you try it, let me know what you think. Hello, brains. This is Dr. Hallowell. If you haven't seen him already on our channel, Dr. Hallowell is the ADHD expert, Harvard trained psychiatrist, author of like 25 books, many of which are about ADHD, um, and just knows knows so much about ADHD and has been teaching others about it for so, so long. One of the best things I've personally learned from Dr. Hallowell was from a keynote that he gave at the International ADHD Conference a couple of years back about something called the demon. So I wanted to have him come on and talk about this creation in his own words. Yes, it, it, it really is um, one of the most valuable insights uh, or biological facts that I've learned in the past, oh, 15 years. And it, it comes out of fMRI, where you can see the brain in action. And what they found out, uh, Gabrielli at MIT did most of this research, that that when you're doing something creative, and that's sort of that's our, we ADDers, I have it too. That's, that's our strongest asset is our imagination. And when we're doing something, using it to bake a cake or write a book or design a building, you know, when we're involved in the act of creation, which is, you know, where we, where we are at our best, four different regions of the brain light up, neural networks, and together, they're called the task positive network. It's a connectome, which, uh, you know, it, it's not a separate region, but it's it it's four different regions, each contributing. So it's like four different states, each contributing something. And the, the task positive network is where we do our best work, where we're, we're in the groove. We're, we're in the zone and in, in flow, right? In, in flow, in the zone, exactly. Then you were in the TPN, the task positive network. And uh, boy, you want to stay in the TPN as long as you can, but you can't stay in it all day. That's the thing about, by the way, that, that's just the thing about focus anyway. You, you cannot, we're not a machine. Uh, machines can do this. They can stay wherever you want them to indefinitely as long as they've got a source of energy. But we, our brains cannot do that. So we can't stay in the TPN indefinitely. So when we're finished, whatever we're doing, or when we wear out and take, have to go for a break, you can see on fMRI, the, the TPN shuts down. It, the, these regions all go dark. And the old thinking was the brain kind of takes a rest because that makes intuitive sense. Nothing could be further from the truth. The brain actually uses, you brains, you actually use more oxygen and, and more glucose uh, when the TPN shuts down than, than when, it, when it's active. So what's going on there? Well, four other regions in the brain light up. And uh, together, this 
connectome is called the default mode network, the DMN, which I call the demon because DMN sounds like demon, also because it acts like a demon. In us with the ADD, you see, both the TPN and the and the DMN are are partake of the imagination. Another another structure, if you will, that has no localization. You you can't say this is the imagination here, here, there. It's like the hippocampus or the cerebellum, or you, you can't say this is where the imagination is. But you can say in these two connectomes, that's partaking of the imagination. It's interesting that something as critical as the imagination, we don't know where it is. But so when the when the demon lights up, in most people, it's it's just fine. But for us, for some reason, it tends to send out these relentlessly negative messages. You're stupid, you're boring, you're ugly, nothing's going to work out, you're lazy, you're everything you've thought of, you're arrogant, you're a narcissist, you're full of yourself, you're nasty, you're a disappointment to the world, you'll never achieve your dreams. I mean, you know, we just lambaste ourselves, we just 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 flog ourselves and and we stay riveted there. We 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 stay attached, we stay pouring over the terrible insults the the DMN is 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 sending us and 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 rubbing our nose in and um you say why don't we detach why don't we look elsewhere well remember we 80 years were always looking for high stimulation contentment is too bland you don't say she was riveted in contentment <laughs> but you do say she was riveted in despair in in misery, in in thoughts of uh, self attack, and and you know life, it, that's captivating. That's riveting. It's like a horror movie. Only the movie is your life. So we torture ourselves because it's stimulating. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So this is like rumination. Yeah, it is rumination, uh, brooding. The, the, these dark states that people with ADD report consistently that they're prone to, and they don't know what to do about it. And it, it, they don't understand that they actually can do something about it. What, what they usually do is just tough it out and, and go through these. And what's really bad is when they believe what the DMN is saying, when they mistake it for reality, when they believe their life is going to turn to poop, when they, when they believe they're a useless piece of blank, and when they mistake the, the imaginations of the DMN, the demon, for reality. Which they're all too ready to do, because people with ADD, their self-esteem tends to be tenuous anyway. So if some voice comes along and says, "Yeah, you suck. You're right. You suck," they'll nod. Yeah, I do suck. You're you're right. And and so you know, the- a lot of times I start problem solving. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, this friend must hate me. What do I do? How do I fix this? And I I start problem solving. It's the optimist in you. That's good. That's good. <laughs> That's good. The trick is number one, recognize it when it's happening. You say, "This is the demon. This is not insight." This is not my discovering a eureka moment that life, in fact, sucks and I suck too. No, <laughs> this is this is imaginary. This is a figment of your imagination. And then the way to shut it off, you think for a minute, what can the brain not live without? Oxygen and, and glucose. And how do you shut those off? You switch your attention. So you... you, you no longer feed the demon with your attention. Without your attention, it can't survive. Without your attention, it, 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 it goes dark in a second. The minute you look at somewhere else and pay attention to something else, it's gone. It's a figment of your imagination. So, How can you tell? Because mine's very convincing. <laughs> it's always convincing. <laughs> That's the thing. It's always convincing. And don't try to argue it because it'll out argue you every single time. It, it's like the devil because it's your creation. You have to be able to say to yourself, I've done a lot of good things in my life. You have to call on, on your common sense and your reality. You're wrong, demon. Shut up. And then redirect your attention as quickly as possible. And so you want to have a Rolodex in your mind, to use an obsolete term, uh, a Rolodex of other things you can focus on uh, or do. A quick burst of exercise works wonders, but make it vigorous. It's got to take you out of the moment. Doing something creative, uh, you know, bake a cake or or write an email to somebody that you care about. Um, uh, loud music can can do it. 
uh, call up a friend uh, and have a some something of an in-depth conversation, not just chit chat. Um, these are all ways of shutting down the the demon by means of focusing on something else. Because the minute you shut off its its access to your attention, it's gone. So you're engaging the task positive network yeah, to you, shut down exactly exactly. You're cutting off the energy supply to the DMN, and it, it, it instantly, it's gone. And you want to get in the habit of doing that to show it who's boss. A lot of people are so intimidated by their demon that they give it all the power. And it only has the power you give it. And you, you, you labor under this illusion that somehow it is more powerful than it is. It's only as powerful as you let it be. And you got to understand that. And and people say, I'm powerless over it. No, you're not. It's as simple and as difficult as redirecting your attention. Sounds easy. It's not because the demon is so captivating. It's so seductive. As you said, it's almost convincing. You almost believe you're as bad as it says you are. But you know deep down inside that you're not. And so you got to have put that as your default position. I'm not as bad as the demon says I am. God damn it, I'm not. And and insist upon it, you know. And so and then and then re- redirect your attention. It's like flipping a light switch. Once you've done that, if you've really redirected it, it's gone. It's always competing to take over your entire self. And you say, why in the world would a part of me want to do that? Why would I use my creativity, my imagination, to sow the seeds of my own demise. Why would I do that? We don't know, but we do it. And it's the, it's the flip side. I mean, everything in ADD has two sides. The, the most wonderful gift we have is our imagination. The most horrible curse we have is our imagination. It's the, it's the price we pay for being so imaginative. But what you need to do it, to not suffer unnecessarily is learn that you have control. You have the power to flip that light switch. But you got to learn how to do it because it will put out send, it, send out tentacles and try and hold on to you. It'll, it'll as you're trying to you know it'll it'll bring you in. It'll it'll try to bring you into its lair and, and so it can continue to torture you. No, I'm out of here. Goodbye. Boom. And you, you focus on something else. You shut it down. So how do you shift your attention to something else? Oh, I, I've gotten pretty good at it. But, you know, I, I, I can absolutely be uh, seduced by the demon. But I, um, uh, one thing I often do is write. Uh, another thing I often do is just get on a phone and talk to somebody. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, another thing I, I do uh, uh, is have a big, strong cup of coffee, um, you know, so I self-medicate. I try not to eat in those moments because that, that's, you know, feeding the on another part of you that you don't <laughs> want to feed. And unfortunately, uh, sometimes I go on Amazon and buy things the, <laughs> I, I, when the tough, you know, the, going the tough go shopping. So that, I don't recommend that. But um, so but what if it doesn't work? Because I, I have noticed sometimes I'm, I'm ruminating on something and I go do something, but I am still ruminating on the thing. It, the thing you do has got to be stimulating enough. It's got to be a strong enough stimulation to shut down the, the, the demon. The, the demon is powerful. And I, you know, reading the phone book won't shut it down. So you, you got to find something that's in, in itself stimulating enough to out-stimulate the demon. Well, this reminds me of another thing that you taught me, which is never worry alone. Oh, yes, yes, absolutely. That, so Cause it, sometimes the demon isn't just attacking your self-esteem. Sometimes it's worrying about a million things, oh, right? Totally, absolutely. Yeah, you know, absolutely. It can... You just line up every bad thing that could happen, an infinite web of what if, what if this, what if that, what if this, what if that. And we're very good at producing long, long lists of, of uh, things to, that could go bad. And, and you're so right. The, if you can talk to someone, the act of worrying with someone immediately, see, the two key variables that create worry are a heightened feeling of vulnerability and a diminished feeling of power and control. So anything you can do that can it, it increases your feeling of power and control and reduces your feeling of vulnerability will reduce toxic worry. Well, the best thing to do that is, is to have be with another person, either over the phone or, or in person, because the minute you connect, you immediately, immediately, with no reason, it, it's, it's pre-verbal, it's pre-rational, you feel less vulnerable mm. and you feel more in control. 
It, just imagine you're in a big warehouse in the dark alone. You get paranoid. You get scared. If you're in that same big dark warehouse with someone, you laugh. You crack jokes about exactly. horror films. Exactly. and Exactly. So, you know, there is magic in, in connection. There is. And, and it's it's it's. It's a great way to uh, dispel worry and not to say you go into denial. The complete absence of worry, that's bad, too. It's called denial. You don't go into a state of denial, but, but you, you, you retain your reason. You retain rationality so you're not exaggerating the risks and minimizing the, the tools you have to protect yourself. Thank you to my brain advocates and all my Patreon brains for giving us the support that we need to do episodes like this um, and have Dr. Hallowell on not once, but many times. Like, subscribe, click all the things, and I will see you next video. Want to say bye? Bye, when, brain. Oh, yeah. <laughs> One, two, three. Bye, brains. Bye. Don't let the demon get you.